Wouldn't it be nice if there was just a training manual on how to be a software developer? When I worked at Starbucks, I was able to make espresso drinks like lattes and cappuccinos within an hour or two. And yet with software development, I literally had to go through an entire year of learning on my own, hundreds of hours before I actually landed a job with a company. Because there's no official training manual to follow, you have to figure out everything on your own. And since learning to code is not about memorization, it's not something you just cram and learn for a few weeks. There are definite ways that you are going to try to approach learning this that are going to lead you nowhere. So I'm making this video to help you to identify four early warning signs that you're learning to code wrong. And I also want to give you some of the advice that I've given some of my clients who've run into some of these problems that you can help to get through whatever issues you're going through. So let's go ahead and dive in. So one thing you may have noticed is that there's really no shortage of free information available to you about how to learn to code, how to write code to create software applications. And yet, I still hear so many of you guys complain that there's something you feel like you're missing. There's some magic tutorial out there that you're missing that if you took would just complete the picture for you. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, but it's not the lack of good information that's holding you back. Instead, the problem often resides with how you actually learn. Being a self-taught programmer is not just about practicing and studying. It also means that you are the one who creates your own curriculum. In other words, what that basically means is you're the one who has to create that game plan that is designed to develop a really strong skill set that will lead to a job. Now, I found that most people are pretty good about studying and practicing diligently, meaning that they can sit down if they're really motivated for an hour or two every night to actually do the work of the software developer. But where most people, to be honest, suck is creating that game plan. We're not taught how to do this. In school, we're given a curriculum. They tell you exactly what you need to learn. There's never a class or a course of teaching you how to learn a really hard skill on your own. So without this knowledge of how to create your own curriculum, what often happens then is you just start picking random things to do. You get really busy, but it leads you nowhere. So the first early sign that you're learning to code wrong is that you lack a simple learning process. Now, let me explain a little bit about what that means. The clients who I've worked with who've been successful in landing a job all have a very interesting thing in common is that their journey looks really boring. They aren't doing crazy things like staying up till five in the morning, studying and cramming in every single day, taking tons of caffeine to stay up late. Instead, what they're doing is any given day, maybe they're studying their one, two, maybe three hours that they need to put in and then they call it a day and then they do the exact same thing the next day. They just chip away little by little by little. When you do this for multiple weeks, multiple months, all of a sudden you get to the point where you have learned a ton, you have a portfolio of projects you've built and suddenly you're ready to apply for a job. It's just that simple. It's so straightforward. What these successful clients have done is they've made the learning process simple so it's easy to follow. There are two ways to make your learning process simple. First is you wanna develop a set schedule for studying and practice. One of my favorite sayings is clarity is power. And when you have absolute clarity about when you need to sit down and study, because you set up a schedule for yourself, that's where you're really going to develop consistency. Where you're going to run into problems is where you leave things open-ended. So if you say to yourself, I'm going to study at some point today, it means you're probably not going to study at all. The second thing to make the learning process simpler is regularly planning and reviewing. Before each day begins, you'll want to decide where you're going to spend your time. So are you going to spend that time on a tutorial? Are you going to spend that time working on a portfolio project that you're building out? Are you going to spend that time preparing for some technical interview that you may have to do? You have to decide this upfront. If you don't make that decision before you sit down to study, then what often happens to people is they pick the easiest thing on their list. And that's where they begin to do things that aren't really helpful in the long run. All right, so we made it to that first early warning sign, but you know what's another thing that's really simple to do to simplify your learning process? Go down below, smash the subscribe button so you get notifications anytime I put out a new video. So the key to learning to code is about mastering a very critical distinction. Do you remember earlier how I mentioned that when I worked at Starbucks, I was trained how to make a cappuccino in basically under an hour? Well, the key component of learning that quickly and effectively is that you basically get hands-on training where you basically repeat that process over and over again. In the case of Starbucks, my shift supervisor brought me over to an espresso machine. She demonstrated how to make a cappuccino and then I had to make about three or four cappuccinos in a row. And then all of a sudden, boom, it clicked. I knew how to make a cappuccino. In other words, I didn't watch a three hour training video on how to make a cappuccino. Starbucks has enough experience training people that they realize they can give them a little bit of instruction. And then the best thing to have them do is practice over and over again. Of course, it still took me weeks or months to maybe memorize it and really master the art of making a cappuccino, 
but they just got enough to get me going. Now, when you're learning to code, the equivalent of my Starbucks training would be learning the fundamentals or the basics of a programming language and then going out and building a few small projects to test out your knowledge. However, most people don't take the Starbucks approach when they're learning. Instead, they take the equivalent of watching many hours of other people making cappuccinos or they're reading a lot of books about how other people made cappuccinos in the past. If you don't follow what I'm saying, what I mean is that many people consume a lot of content of other people creating software applications or they spend a lot of time reading books that talk about the fundamentals, talk about syntax, talk about data types, talk about methods and functions, but they never actually apply that in any meaningful way. So the next early warning sign to be aware of is that you're obsessed with theory over application. Watching other people code and consuming information in books has its place, but it has a limit on its effectiveness. The reason you'll get a job offer from a company does not come down to what you know. It comes down to what you can do with what you know. I would never hire somebody because they've read 100 books on programming or done 100 tutorials. That does not impress me in the least. Instead, what I look for is somebody who's built a variety of projects, both big and small. I want to know that this person has gotten their hands dirty. I want to know if you've gone through that long and difficult process of building a complex application because somebody who's gone through that long and difficult and painful process is somebody who I can trust that if I give them something to work on that they can go and run with it. The dirty secret about being job ready as a self-taught programmer is that you don't actually have to master a wide range of skills, but what you do have to master is problem solving and thinking like a programmer. This is not something that you can learn from a book. This will come from practical experience of putting yourself through the fire of building applications. Now I can already hear it now. You're going to say, but Andy, I don't know what applications to build. So the point of projects is to practice what you're learning. So you don't have to obsess over getting the right project to build. There are literally endless project ideas. If you know how to use Google, I'll even throw up my video here of five JavaScript projects that you can build that you can apply to any programming language. Now, if you haven't started building your own applications, I'm going to give you some advice here. Writing code, building your own software applications is very hard. Most people don't want to do it. You will feel lost. You will feel disoriented. You will feel like you keep wanting to running back to tutorials because of this nice warm place where you get all the information you need. You don't have to think for yourself, but this is why so many people end up failing to become programmers. So embrace the chaos of building projects. You won't be very good at it at the very beginning. It will be like the equivalent to drawing stick figures when you're drawing, but just keep going through the process over and over again, get very comfortable with building applications and applying the theory. All right. So now on to my next early sign here. So one of the things that surprises so many new developers, people who land their first job is just how much time you spend fixing your own mistakes. Now, this may not be very scientific of me to say, but I believe just about 50% of your time as a new developer will be spent tracking down some bug, some error, or some just mistake that you introduced into your own code. And no matter how tedious, no matter how carefully you write code, you are going to make mistakes. After a while, what you begin to realize is mistakes are very normal and they're a necessary part of the learning process. So the next early sign to be aware of is that you're afraid to make mistakes. There's a pretty simple way to know if this is you. Just go back to any project that you've created either on your own or with a tutorial. If I told you to go refactor that or add something to it or change it in some meaningful way, does that bring terror or does that bring fascination? If you are scared to touch that project because you might break something, then that may be a real problem. Making mistakes repeatedly as you're learning is the best way to really know what you're doing. And no, this is not the same advice as you see on like a motivational poster where it says like, mistakes are proof that you're trying or something like that. Mistakes actually serve a very important purpose. When you make a mistake, you have to stop, you have to slow down and you have to analyze your code. That often means stopping and reading your code line by line by line to see if it's doing what you're expecting it to do. It also means that you'll have to use the debugging tools that you'll have available, which allows you to look into the application as it's running to see what, what things are doing, which is sort of like opening the hood of the car as it's running. When you make mistakes, you're going to be continually reminded where you lack understanding, where your blind spots are, which should tip you off that you should stop and maybe learn something more in depth. Anyone who spends hundreds or thousands of hours reading through their code over and over again in different contexts are building neural pathways up here in your brain that are going to make it easier to read code in the future. The telltale sign of this is when you begin dreaming in code and when you begin to visualize the code as it's running. So that's something to look forward to. So if you find that you're afraid of making mistakes, then what I'd recommend is number one, really making a mindset shift. Your perception that a mistake is bad is half the problem here. When you realize that every mistake is actually a gift to you to help learn is when you really start to embrace the messy process of learning to code. Now, the second and more practical thing that you can do to embrace mistake making is to really learn source control like Git. 
You should never be afraid of breaking your code or making a mistake if you're using Git properly. If you're making regular commits, which are basically regular snapshots of your code and you're using branching strategies, then you should have nothing to worry about if a mistake happens, if something occurs, that you can go back and change it to the way it was before you made that mistake. All right, so we're in the final stretch here. Let's get to my fourth early warning sign. Let's get right to the point. I don't care who you are, you are going to suffer from imposter syndrome, which is feeling like you're a fake developer. Now one would think that if you spent six months or 12 months just endlessly studying that you would eventually feel like you're ready to be a programmer. Well, I hate to break this to you, but you will not feel ready. This is very important to get through your head. And the reason being is because you're going to use this as a, an excuse, as a reason to continually delay and not apply for jobs. I've seen people who are ready to start applying for jobs, meaning that they have requisite skills, they have a nice portfolio, but they refuse to start applying because they want to feel more ready, which is pure self-sabotage. It's self-sabotage because I've seen people with mediocre skills who just scraped a portfolio together, who happened to get a job interview and impressed the company enough to get a job offer. And this isn't even that uncommon because companies are in dire need of software developers right now. Yes, many companies would love to get a senior developer, a very experienced developer, but since they're in such demand, they're such low quantity, they end up being open to hiring people with less experience, who have mediocre skills, who at least can show that they can do the work. So the final early sign that you're learning to code wrong is that you haven't committed to a specific date when you're going to start applying for jobs. The reason this is important in relations to learning to code is because I'm assuming you're not trying to do this for fun. You're trying to do this to make money, to get a job. What ends up happening for so many people who decide to learn to code then is because they don't pick a finite timeline of when to do this, they don't really have a sense of urgency of when they need to get things done. So I urge you to pick a date in the future of when you're going to start applying for jobs. And I call this a drop dead date, meaning that the only way that you're not going to start applying for jobs on this date is if you have literally dropped dead. So it doesn't matter if you don't have a portfolio, if you feel like you suck at programming, you're going to do that. And by the way, having a drop dead date should make you a little bit nervous. It might be a little bit scary. That is the point. It's just like jumping in a cold pool. You can't think your way through jumping in a cold pool. You just got to push yourself to do it, right? The same way with conquering imposter syndrome, you just got to get out there and start applying for jobs. Now, if you're looking for more useful tips and advice on how to become a software developer, I've created a self-taught programmer study manual. It's a free PDF that has given some of my best advice on how to teach yourself to code. So I will definitely leave a link in the description below of how you can download that. Other than that, thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time.